A pastor in the Dallas, Texas area has been sentenced to 35 years in prison for what was a pretty disgusting crime. But this actually was not the first time that the pastor had gotten himself caught up in some trouble because he was previously charged back in 2011 as well as in 1995. I will explain what those charges were here in a little bit. But on Monday, June 10th, a jury had found Pastor Whitney Foster of the True Foundation non-denominational church in Dallas, Texas, guilty of fraud worth up to $800,000. What exactly did he do? And what is he saying now that he has been sentenced we're going to talk about all of that and so much more in just a second. But before we even do that, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all which you'll find a link to in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate the work that I do here and you would like to bless me with a donation, there's a few different ways you could do that. One, by simply hitting the super thanks button on the YT video or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description. Hey, do you want to get access to all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform? Well, when you join Patreon, that's exactly what you are going to get along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me over there. Again, it's patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Let's talk about Whitney Foster. You know, before I even get into what he was sentenced for, I mentioned to you at the top that he had previously been convicted of other charges as well. Going back to 1995, arson. 2011, identity theft. And, well, that's actually going to tie in to what's probably now his final charge because he's like 56 years old and with this 35-year prison sentence, well, even if he gets out, he's going to be well into his 90s at that point or around 90. And um, there ain't going to be much life left for him. I truly hope that Whitney Foster repents for what he has done if he wants to spend you know, eternity with the Lord. That's up to him, though. We know that uh, God is long-suffering, but um, that will come to an end here very soon. Let's talk about what he did on Monday, June 10th. He was found guilty by a jury. Theft of up to $800,000 for stealing not one, not two, but three from my friends who speak Espanol. That would be tres, tres church properties. How did he do this? By creating fraudulent deeds to three separate churches in order to obtain their properties. He used fake names. He made up like the fake names of pastors to get these deeds. And, and the way that he did this was because you got to understand his church at the time, that being True Foundation, non-denominational church, was a very small congregation. They did not have an actual place to meet. So what did he do? Foster thought that by somebody who was a nonprofit himself, he could just come into these other churches that are nonprofit and attempt to steal their property right out from underneath them. And the first church that kind of sounded the alarm about Foster was First Christian Church of Lancaster in Texas. Uh, they are a congregation that is about 170 years old. And Foster kind of wormed his way in here, created a fake name, and, you know, basically bought the church property for like 10 bucks. You know, he said that he, he put this fake name on, you know, on the deed here, which he claimed was a board member until First Christian found out that that person doesn't even exist. They don't even know who, you know, who they are. But that's the scheme here that Foster used because he was trying to grow his congregation and you know, First Christian, even still to this day, they are still trying to undo, you know, everything that's caught up, you know, you know, legally as far as what Foster did. 
But then you had Canada Drive Church, which was another congregation that Foster took advantage of, took their deed as well. And that's actually, you know, currently right now where Foster's congregation is meeting. The other congregation that was there at Canada Drive originally, they were booted from their property. They were gone. The two of these churches are still currently right now in Foster's name as, uh, you know, they, they try to just undo you know, what he left as a complete and total mess. Now, Foster has said that he is going to appeal the decision. And, well, of course he is. But again, if you take a look back at his criminal record, it's very telling on who this guy is. He is not a pastor, okay? He is not a pastor in any way. He never really was. He was occupying as a pastor to fulfill his nefarious deeds of what he wanted to do. Deeds, yeah, like dead, you know, stealing the church deeds, fraudulent deeds, creating fake names of pastors and board members that don't exist. I said it before, he did it with identity theft back in 2011. So what, not even eight years later, then he's going after First Christian Church of Lancaster. They were horrified by this. They're like, here we thought, you know, here's this, this pastor, he wants to worship with us one morning. And then just like that, right out from underneath us, he attempts to steal our deed. We're, we're talking $800,000 in property here across these three churches. But then we find out even more that apparently there is evidence out there that this man stole an additional seven more properties on top of the three that he was already convicted and sentenced for. Unbelievable. These, it's like no fear of the Lord whatsoever when it comes to these individuals. And that's sad because as I always say, if you are somebody who calls yourself a pastor, calls yourself a minister, you are held to a higher account. God is going to bring this all up before you when you go before him on judgment day. And he ain't going to play around with it. In this case here, this pastor got earthly justice, which is great. But if he does not repent, he's going to get a justice that's even worse than, you know, earthly justice. And that's eternal justice. And eternal justice is, well, you don't come back from that. To be eternally separated from the Lord should be the scariest feeling that anybody could ever have. Because it's your eternity. And if you're not with the Lord, there's only other there's only one other place you'll be. Um, and that is with Satan and his cohorts. And I don't think you want to be there. But what this tells me from what Whitney Foster said, that he is going to appeal this decision because he feels that he is not guilty of what he did, tells me everything that I need to know about this man and the fact that he most likely, there's always a small chance, but he most likely will not repent. And he will take this with him as he leaves this world and he will become eternally separated from the Lord. We continue to see this exposure and it's going to continue. Judgment starts first in the house of God. He's not playing. I want to hear from you on this down in the comments section, especially if you were somebody that attended any of these churches that Foster attempted to steal, whether it was First Christian of Lancaster, whether it was Canada Drive Church, or whether it was, you know, uh, the church at Nineveh, all of them. Uh, even if you were a member of, you know, his own church, his, his own congregation, which was, again, very small at the time this all started, True Foundation Non-Denominational Church. Anybody else as well, you want to offer your thoughts on this, drop it down below in the comment section. I will have more information for you on this story, which I will include a link to in the description of this video. Just make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the description. That's where you will find the link there. And again, if you enjoy and appreciate my work here and you would like to contribute with a donation to bless me, there's a few different ways you can do that. One by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here or join that Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I discuss here in the church and exposing of these wolves, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So that being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet accepted Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. 
This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world, as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again child of God, you will have eternal life. Hey, trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll talk with you soon.